Boca Chica Starship and Assembly Tower growing, Raptor's short appearance in Florida, 2021 for first commercial flights with Starship, Falcon 9 core on display in Rocket Garden, and NASA goes for Titan with yet another quadcopter. My name is Felix, welcome back for episode 11 of What About It. So you guys officially rock. From genius to Dracula, you gave me all sorts of nicknames and you clicked, clicked and clicked on my videos. So much so that three weeks after my thank you for 100 subscribers, you give me yet another opportunity to thank you again. 1000! Pinch me! Thank you so much for making this happen. The next thank you will be at 10,000 subscribers, so that's gonna take a while if it ever happens. So for now, you're safe, no more kisses for a while, I promise. Today we have some very exciting news to talk about, so let's dive right in. Starship Boca Chica is growing further. As you can see in this picture, SpaceX and Boca Chica is not waiting around. Even though Raptor tests have been postponed due to SN05 having problems, the crew in Boca Chica is working relentlessly to get the orbital prototype assembled. Another dark section has been added to the stack. Again, if anybody of you has a working theory on what that dark outer layer could be meant to do, tell me in the comments. I'm eager to speculate as I'm still not completely sold on the insulation or scratch protection theory. Meanwhile, next to the orbital prototype, the assembly tower is growing as well. Before, the main theory about what that structure could be meant to do was a wind barrier. It could still be part of the reason why SpaceX is building it, but it becomes clearer every day that it's probably going to be an assembly tower for Starship. Once top and bottom section are finished, SpaceX is going to need some structure to assemble the two and stack them together. I'm positive that this won't take that much longer either. If progress continues at the current pace, it could well be that we see a stacked starship at the end of the month. The hopper will do some altitude tests and if everything goes well, we might see starship in orbit early next year. Raptor made a short appearance in Cocoa, Florida. Last week, Elon had Raptor on display in Coco for everyone to take a look and a few pictures. It might have been there for fitting tests on the Coco Starship prototype, but it might as well also have been a publicity stunt as it was literally on display for everyone to see. Meanwhile, Elon visited the construction site to see about the progress that's been made. He did a short live stream to the Starmus Festival. There, Brian May, former guitarist from the band Queen, presented him with a Stephen Hawking medal. Elon sadly had no time to attend the Starmus Festival himself because he was very busy with the Falcon Heavy launch of last week. Understandably, if you take a look at last Thursday's episode, where I explain in detail why STP-2 might have been the most difficult rocket launch in the last 50 years. Again, incredible work SpaceX, well done. But what about it? Why is SpaceX continuing at such an incredible pace? Is there a deadline to the whole thing? Well, not quite a deadline yet, but it's shaping up to be one soon. SpaceX is targeting 2021 for first commercial flights with Starship. According to Elon himself, SpaceX is already talking to three private customers for launches in 2021. All of them from the telecommunications sector. If they book flights, and they better do, Starship already has customers booked for 2021. So the pace SpaceX is going makes total sense. If Starship is supposed to be ready by then, they have a total of 24 to 30 months left to get the whole system finished. And super heavy? Starship's booster hasn't even been spotted yet. Elon of course wants a stable government on Mars soon. There is a lot of work that needs to be done in the next few years and that's going to be very exciting for us fans. Loads of stuff to see and talk about. Hopper this year, Starship early next year and maybe even Super Heavy and some combined flights. And then 2021, another episode of Starman in Space. This time maybe with the Tesla semi truck. The rocket would most certainly be capable of doing the stunt. Falcon 9 core on display in Rocket Garden. Finally, Kennedy Space Center wants SpaceX to join the garden of champion rockets. Kennedy Space Center has a garden full of rockets. It's a pilgrimage site for any space and rocket fan. You can find all the famous rockets there lined up for display. Wait, all the rockets? Not all of them. SpaceX is still missing. Even though the Falcon architecture clearly revolutionized the way we look at orbital rockets today. I mean, can't land again? Obsolete. 
So someone was asking Elon on Twitter about a possible supercharger somewhere close to KSC. Elon, always happy to answer requests, replied that he's going to do it. High five Elon. Then though, something much more interesting happened. Farin Proxy stepped into the conversation and asked Elon if he was willing to put a Falcon 9 core into KSC's visitor center Rocket Garden. Now you're probably asking yourself, who's Terran Proxy? He's the guy to decide exactly that. He's the COO of the visitor center. If he asks, it's an honest request. What did Elon reply? The only thing that makes sense, it's an honor. So we will hopefully soon be able to see a Falcon 9 core at KSC's visitor center rocket garden. The first private built rocket to receive the honor. Right next to its brand new supercharger. Happy late birthday, Elon. What an exciting week. Stephen Hawking medal, the most difficult rocket launch in the last 50 years, a rocket in the rocket garden, and a birthday party. Keep going at this pace and you'll be the first Martian president within the next decade. NASA goes for Titan with yet another quadcopter. The flying season has started. Last week, NASA announced yet another rotorcraft to venture out into interplanetary space to visit another of our neighbors. On another episode, I already covered NASA's quadcopter to fly with the 2020 rover to Mars. Very interesting topic, make sure to check it out. As part of NASA's New Frontiers mission, the target now is Titan, one of Saturn's moons. Today, if you want to get information about Titan, you have to start with the Huygens probe, which landed on Titan in January 14, 2005. Huygens was part of the famous Cassini-Huygens mission, which had a planned but still very spectacular grand finale in Saturn's atmosphere on September 15, 2017. Titan is a very alien world. It's thick atmosphere with about 45% higher pressure than Earth atmosphere. It's surface temperature at minus 180 degrees Celsius. Methane rain falling from the sky as the methane rich atmosphere has about 50% methane humidity. On the ground, Titan reveals something it has in common with Earth. It has a liquid cycle. On Earth, water evaporates and forms clouds. These clouds then produce rain and the rain rivers, which flows back into the sea. On Titan, methane does the same thing. Cassini found incredible things on Titan. Methane rivers have been found, stretching 400 kilometers from their source to their estuary. Methane seas have been found with signs of waves on them. Because of the extreme temperatures, the Huygens lander only was able to operate on the ground for 72 minutes. In this time though, it took 350 pictures and sent 474 megabits of data back to Earth. It gave us the first detailed data from within Titan's atmosphere and from its surface. It was a huge success. Now NASA wants to go much further. The Dragonfly rotorcraft will leave Earth in 2026 and arrive on Titan in 2034. Its mission duration is planned for two and a half years minimum. Hidden inside its entry interface, it will come in at 7.3 kilometers per second. A drogue chute and after this a main chute will slow the craft down going through Titan's thick atmosphere. Once a safe speed has been reached, it will land guided by its four rotors, so powered flight will guide its path to the surface. This will make it easier to find a suitable landing spot. An area covered by vast sand dunes has been chosen as a possible landing site. It's powered with a radioactive decay cell to recharge batteries when landed. It will have cameras on board filming every flight. It will have cameras facing down to give us a bird's eye view of one of the most unique moons in the solar system. Titan is believed to have a water ocean underneath its surface. Combined with methane, which allows organic chemistry, there could be life on Titan. For this, Dragonfly will have drills in its landing skids to take samples from the ground wherever it lands. First, Dragonfly will be flying over sandy dunes to later arrive on a more rugged terrain. The rotors enable the craft to cover much more distance than a rover possibly could and to pass over terrain rover wheels could not traverse over. At first, Titan looks beautiful but hostile. But on the second look, Titan has everything it needs to produce life. A fluid cycle with complex molecules constantly falling from the sky and geologically active volcanoes to keep water liquid. That is why NASA will send this very expensive mission to Titan. To hunt the answer to question number one. Is there life anywhere else than on our home planet? 
Now begins the long planning and manufacturing phase for one of the next decade's most exciting missions. This is what NASA was created for, to explore new frontiers. Good luck NASA, Dragonfly might make a headline to go straight into history books. So this wraps it up for today's episode of What About It. A lot of things have happened in Elon's world in the last week and a lot of things are yet to come. Only serial number 6 is missing to get the hopping party started in Boca Chica. Starship will fly into orbit possibly next year. First customers are already in line. Will SpaceX be able to make this very ambitious timeline happen? And will Dragonfly bring us the first aerial views of Titan, a possible location for life beyond Earth? Tell us your thoughts in the comments. Thank you for watching this episode of What About It. If you liked what you saw, don't forget to subscribe and like as this helps me the most. Feel free to hit me up on my Patreon page so I can get additional help in making more and better content. As this gives me more time to focus on what I love doing the most to give you the latest and greatest about space and science. I hope to see you on the next episode. Until then, have a great time.